Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. So today's video is uh, kind of a how-to video on how to recover when you have some firmware problems on a LSI controller. So in this particular case, I have a Dell uh, Perk H710P, which is based on the LSI SAS 2208 uh, RAID controller. And during boot up, I took a screenshot of this so you guys can see it. I'm getting this error message that says firmware is in fault state, MFI register state, um, and then it has this hex code of F0010002. And basically, um, the controller is not working. And it says, uh, follows that with adapter at base port is not responding, no adapter. So in this case, um, the firmware is in some fault state, it's not starting up properly. And uh, also, if you try to boot in this state, it takes a long time to boot. Okay, so, um, but you do, if you want to recover, you do need to boot up, so you do have to wait and let it kind of finish booting. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to fix this. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to get a copy of Dell's firmware for this particular card. So let me show you how we're going to get that. Let's go to support.dell.com. And I've already had it selected here. So this is a Dell uh, R720 XD. Um, this is a 720, that's close enough. It'll have the same card. Okay, go to drivers and downloads. And I primarily work in a Linux environment, so I'm going to uh, look for the package for RHEL 7. And let's just filter out, I'll look for H710P. Okay, and this is the mini monolithic card that's on the motherboard. So that would be this bottom here, uh, the bottom one down here that says the H710P mini monolithic adapter. And the firmware version here is 21.3.5-0002. And you can just basically click on download and the file will download. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you've downloaded that file, which is basically like a self-extracting uh, script that Dell provides, uh, in the case of at least for Linux, that's often the format that Dell provides. So here's, here's that file we just downloaded. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. And, you know, when you update the firmware normally, you would just run that script and it would extract the firmware and the tools it needs and does some checking and then flashes the firmware for you. But since we don't have a working card at this point in time, we're going to have to do the firmware flashing manually through using some recovery tools. And so uh, this script by itself just won't work right now because the card just isn't working. Um, but instead, we're going to extract the firmware out of this uh, self uh, executing binary script and use that firmware with some of the recovery tools. So I wanna show you how to do that first. Um, you do have to run these uh, scripts as root for whatever reason. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to root. I'm also going to copy this, well actually, you know what, let's first of all make a temporary directory. Uh, I'll call it var temp del. And I'm gonna copy this to that directory. And the reason why I'm doing this is that these scripts do some really weird permissions. It's like, I don't know, the, the, the Linux people at Dell's, uh, that work at Dell somehow don't like to deal with proper Linux file permissions. And so they apply some really weird permissions to directories. And if you just run it where, you're, where you are, it'll change the, the directory that you're in in a way that you might not want. So I'd rather just do it in a temp directory and then just blow it away, delete it later. So that's why I'm copying it to temp, uh, var temp del here. And we have to give it uh, executable permissions because we're gonna, we are going to run it, but we're just not gonna run it to run the update. Uh, in fact, the machine I'm on right now isn't, isn't even the server. This is my uh, Fedora Linux desktop environment. Okay, so uh, within this directory, I'm gonna make another temp directory. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna actually extract it there. So we're gonna run the uh, script with the extract option and then we give it the path 
to that temp directory where it's going to basically extract all the contents uh, from that script. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter here and let that happen. All right, so that happened pretty quickly. Um, now, here, if you look at this, you'll see that um, uh, Dell has applied the sticky bit to this temp directory. I'm not sure why it does that. And it likes to make every file executable, even if they're just plain text files, which is, you know, kind of strange. But anyway, okay, so let's go into uh, this payload subdirectory that you're going to see. And in here is this file, fw8148pm.rom. And that is the actual firmware file. All the other stuff is just, you know, the tools and packaging and some metadata and whatever else um, that's wrapped around this self-extracting script. Uh, in order to flash this firmware. And so this is the critical file you need. Now, um, what you need to do is take this file and put it on a uh, bootable uh, FreeDOS uh, USB drive or some other bootable medium. Um, and you, we're going to use the Megarec tool. And I've talked about that before. Um, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to uh, put that, make that tool available for you guys on uh, my website and I'll leave a link in the description so you can download the Megarec tool if you if you can't find it It's all over the internet. I mean if you do a search, I'm sure you can find it um, But just for convenience sake, uh, I'll leave a link to uh, That tool in the description uh, or you can look for it online somewhere else But basically we're going to be using the Megarec tool uh, in uh, DOS to flash this file Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to first of all show you how to extract the actual firmware file from Dell's download. That's a important step along the way. All right, so let me close the screenshot here. And like I said, when you have a card that's in this state, it takes a long time for it to boot. I mean, basically you just turn on the machine and you walk away for 30 minutes or so and then come back, okay? That's how long it can take. So don't be discouraged if it's just like stuck somewhere along the boot process. And that's totally expected because uh, the, the Dell, I think, system BIOS tries to communicate to all the different firmware uh, devices on the motherboard and um, it's going to have a hard time communicating to that uh, PERC H710P uh, that is currently has this firmware fault state. And so I guess because of that, as my guess is that it, because it's in this fault state, um, the system just takes forever to initialize. And, uh, but it, if you just wait long enough, it eventually gets through and it boots up. And so I, I kind of skipped that step here because it took a long time and I didn't want you guys to just watch the system kind of trying to boot for 30 minutes. Um, but in the end, uh, here is um, the system booted into my free DOS USB drive, okay? And I've already actually uploaded that firmware file. I just wanted to show you guys how to uh, extract that file, but make sure to get yourself a free DOS um, bootable USB drive with the Megarec tool and uh, upload that .rom file, the ROM file here that I just showed you, the FW8148PM, uh, okay? All right, so I have this in under Dell. Now you might have it organized differently. I have a lot of various firmware flashing tools and recovery tools in here. So I have, uh, I have it here under H710M, I believe. Yep. So you'll see here I have the FW8148PM.ROM and this is for the H710P uh, and I also have a FW8148MM.ROM and that is for the H710 without the P and basically the difference is um, 512 megs of cache versus a gig of cache. So um, anyway, uh, there are two different files. They're, they're identical in size but the content is actually different. I um, don't know, you know, specifically what's different within the file, but I do. I did a, a diff on those two files, and I, I know that they are different. Um, so I recommend you use the one that matches the card. So in the, in this case, we have an H710P uh, card. So I'm going to be using the FW8148PM card or uh, ROM file. All right. So also in this directory. I have the megarec.exe tool, and so that's the, the recovery tool you're going to need. 
And so first thing we can run mega rec uh, ADP list. And so this is actually an important step because if the card is like so beyond recovery, um, the mega rec tool is not going to be able to identify the card. So here you can see that it clearly does identify one card, card counts uh, colon one, list of identified cards, MR card zero. So zero is the index number for this card. And we're gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna need that in a second here. And the type of card is a 2208. So that is uh, correct. This uh, H710 is based on the LSI SAS 2208 chipset. All right, so let's go ahead and just press enter to get out of that. So we do know that the mega rec tool is able to see the card even though it's in this fault state and so that's very important if you don't get past this step then the rest of this video isn't really going to help you your, your problem is probably something else that uh, can cannot be recovered this way all right so now that we know that um, in order to do the recovery we do m0 flash zero now this zero is the index number of the card and so that's the, the number i was referencing to here up here at the mr card zero and we're going to give it the file um the the firmware file the dot rom file that we talked about earlier so this is the command we need to run for to basically um use the mode zero flash uh to write this rom to that card and hopefully recover it all right, let's go ahead and do this. I'll let this run. It does take a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna let this run and I'll come back. All right, guys, so it looks like the flashing is done. Uh, let's go ahead and reboot this machine, see if we have this fixed now. All right, so here we should see, yep, here's the perk, and it's complaining about some configuration, so there's probably some configuration data that was left behind, but basically it's okay. Um, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and get in to that tool, and we can just see that the card is functional. All right, so we can see that the card is uh, up and running. Uh, we don't see that error anymore. Uh, let's go to, let's see, I think it's next. Yep. So it's able to see all my disks. Of course, um, I had these disks in the ZFS pool, so it's, um, it's not gonna recognize these as any kind of RAID volumes or anything like that. And properties. So, yep, we see it as a Perk H710P Mini. Um, it's running fairly warm right now, but I guess that's okay. I had it, it took a long time to boot, so it's been running for a while uh, just to get it kind of um, into the free DOS. So yeah, it looks like everything is working now, right? So we can get out of this. Yep, so there you have it guys. That's how you can recover. Um, if you f find yourself with one of these cards in that firmware fault state where um, it tells you that you know there's some MFI register, some hex code, um, I don't know that, you know, I don't know what that hex code actually means. Uh, it, probably somebody at Broadcom uh, would, but I, I don't. Um, so if you have a slightly different uh, hex code uh, error message it this process may or may not work i don't know uh, but i've recovered uh, the h710 cards both the the one without the p and the h710p version um, using this method before so uh, anyway i just wanted to share that with you guys in case you run into the same type of problem um, you know, you'll be able to recover your card as well. And again, I'll leave the Megarec tool. Um, you do need to use a specific version of the Megarec tool that understands the 2208. There are older versions that will not recognize the 2208 uh, controllers. So you do have to get uh, a specific version 
I don't quite remember. Sorry, um, I don't remember quite that what the version is, but I'll I'll write that down in the comments um, for you, or not in the comments, but in the description of this video for you, so you'll know what version to look for. And I'll also leave a link so you can download it directly from my website if you uh, want to do it, uh, get it that way. All right, guys. So hope you like this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and be sure to subscribe to see other how-to videos from me. Thank you very much for watching, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.